Maddie McGath, Shalina Lederer, and the aforementioned Haley Green. A tip from the right side is set back by West Virginia, and the Mountaineers score first. Arizona State trying to come down that right side, uh, but Lederer. That's from Arizona State. Jillian Neal snuck it underneath the block for Arizona State, and Mary Schroll, one of the best backline players in the Big 12, will now stand back at the service line as the Sun Devils serve for the first time. Off the tape, West Virginia sets up Green and she delivers. Haley Green is going to be called on a ton tonight with Cassidy Tanton out of the lineup. And she comes up with a big swing there. And those are the kind of swings that I'm sure, you know, head coach Jen Green is, is excited to see so early in the match to try to slow down that offense from Arizona State. McGath to the service line. Layla Ibrahim in for West Virginia, setting up Neal once again, Arizona State. They work back to the right side, but the Mountaineers there to cover up. Neal there. They go outside. Another West Virginia block. Fed to that right side again, and this time Arizona State able to deliver. Looked like the, the block for West Virginia every time they swung. Uh, you know, they, they stayed there kind of guarding that antenna, the line shot, and, you know, Arizona State was able to see that open hole uh, on the cross court and hit that shot. Roberta Robello able to score and even up this first set. The native of Brazil has come on strong recently for this Arizona State team as Ibrahim plays it for West Virginia. Robello working from that right side, now starting her fourth consecutive match as Green fires it into the block and Arizona State's not able to return. Arizona State has a really strong block as well. I know we've talked about their attacking, but their block as well is good as well. So to see the West Virginia offense use that block to their advantage. That's definitely something that's a step in the right direction for Jen Green's squad. Eileen Painter, the freshman from Pottsville, Pennsylvania, rotates into the match to serve. A little bit of a setter play there for Arizona State, but it's sent wide by Argentina Ung in West Virginia. Able to score again. Argentina Ung making her presence felt for the first time. Knows a little bit of something about this West Virginia coaching staff. She played for Jen Greeny at Washington State from 2020 to 2023 as the service error from West Virginia is sent long. One of the things I noticed about Ung, even in you know warm-ups, she's a very active setter. So they run that 5-1 offense. She plays three rotations in the front row. So she's going to be very active. So watch her on those second ball uh, attempts. 900 assists coming into tonight already for the transfer from Washington State. Green, another big swing. She's brought the power tonight, Sam. I think that's the thing that stands out most about Haley Green. Even when it's not the most accurate swing, there's going to be some velocity behind it. And they definitely need a swing like that with Cassie Tanton not being able to play in this match. They need a hitter that's really going to step up. And Haley Green's been that person. She just really needs to take on a little more of a load tonight. Slide to the outside, delivers there for Arizona State. Savannah Colheed, the transfer from, the uni from Indiana University, is able to score. And Colheed, one of two standout middles on this team for Arizona State. Claire Jeter, the other, coming back into the match. We've already talked extensively about her abilities as Colheed delivers with an ace. That's just her sixth of the season, but West Virginia, seemingly just with some miscommunication there, allowed it to fall. Yeah, for West Virginia, you know, if they have any changes in their lineup, it's going to take a couple points for them to get used to playing if they have to switch, you know, playing next to somebody different that they're not used to. Definitely a change in pace that they'll have to get used to as the match goes on. Service error there from Cole. He turns it back over to the Mountaineers as Sidney Reed returns back to the service line. Mentioned earlier for West Virginia, looking for their first win over Arizona State in program history as Jeter's turned away. This time they set up Shania Cromarty. Well, there was nobody home there for West Virginia. And Cromarty standing just five foot nine, but she gets up in a hurry, Sam. And one of the things that Arizona State's going to be able to use to their advantage when they have such a strong middle like Claire Jeter, the, the block for West Virginia might lean a little more towards her, giving that open shot to the to the to the pins. Argentina Un also a quality setter, but it's not going to matter because she's not going back to the line. Maddie McGath, just too much for Mary Schroll to try to keep that one alive. McGath's done a really good job this season, and she's gotten so much better as the season has progressed in running those slides and getting those big swings in transition. She's been an effective uh, hitter and able to get that solo block. And Lauren DeLow back at the service line mentioned before the match she was honored for, his, for her 2,000th career assist 
but the serve goes long that time, and Arizona State draws back even. Obviously an error there from Delo Sam, but you've got a setter that's that experienced that has played with somebody like Maddie McGath. That was a picture-perfect set on that slide as well. It was, and you can really see the dynamic between those two. They played together all year last year. Those are two of the returners for West Virginia, and they really have that good kind of chemistry. Delo knows where McGath likes the ball, and that's definitely something they like to take advantage of every match. Tried to connect there again, but McGath sent it wide. And Cromartie will serve once again. Directed towards Quincy Coyle. Back line attack from Green, handled by Oon. Another chance for Arizona State, and this time, Rebello delivers off the right side again. And that was a really good swing by Rebello. It came on an out-of-system ball set by the middle, Claire Jeter. So that just shows you know, how well organized this team is, that even when their setter can't get that second ball, they can still run a play in system and get a good swing out of it. Cromarty, the Mississippi State transfer, sends it away. In system for West Virginia, Coyle had it stuck. A little bit of a scramble here for the Mountaineers. Reed out to Coyle again. This time she's sent back. Claire Jeter combining with Rebello on the right side. And uh, Jeter, we've talked about already, extensive, extensive history for her on both the offensive and defensive sides. She came into tonight tied for fourth in Arizona State history in career blocks. Now she's got sole possession. And she comes into this match. In the last three matches, she's had six or more blocks. So she's definitely a threat from that blocking perspective as well. Delow out for Coyle, and again, it's sent straight back. This time, a solo block is going to see a lot of those ranked teams down the stretch. Yeah, we've talked about it all season long. There are no nights off in the Big 12. It's such a, a strong conference from top to bottom. It's been really fun to watch this season. Claire Jeter able to score for Arizona State, the West Virginia block. Not able to answer the call there. And Shania Cromartie is going to continue her run for the service line. Cromartie mentioned a transfer from Mississippi State, originally from Tallahassee, Florida. We talked about her being just five foot nine, but still playing that outside hitter position. Well, she was a two-time Florida State high jump champion in high school for a reason, and it's because she can really get up. And now we've got a violation that will go against Arizona State and end her run at the service line. It was a back row attack, and if a player is attacking from the back row, they have to leave the ground behind the 10-foot line, and she was in front of the 10-foot line, which is a violation for back row attack. West Virginia cycles back around to its opening se service player, I should say. That's Quincy Coyle. Arizona State teeing up to the outside. Reed sends it into the crowd. Jillian Neal with a pretty heavy swing off the left side, and Arizona State gets that service right back. In Arizona State, they have so many good hitters that they are able to spread that offense around. So it's really hard to focus in on one player when they have so many good hitters every single rotation. Harry Schroll clips the top of the tape. West Virginia back to green in the block there for Arizona State. Sam, that's one of the things that is oh so valuable and makes this Arizona State team one of the best in the nation. Obviously, Claire Jeter is one of the best middles in the entire country. Savannah Colheed can come in and you don't drop off very much as she combines with Rebello for the block. And that's huge when you have when you have two middles that you can really depend on through all six rotations. You know, sometimes you'll see teams that have one really strong middle and then when that middle comes out, they're not as effective from the front row and that's not the case with Arizona State. A couple of West Virginia's middles coming together there. Shalina Lederer and Maddie McGath sending that back. And you talk about having quality middles. Sam, West Virginia's got all three of its middles on the floor right now. Lederer uh, started on the floor with McGath, and now Ibrahim's rotated in. They're all out there together. And that's one of the things that Coach Greeny has really talked about throughout this first season is that she really wants to run a middle-centric offense. She was a middle in college, and that's something that she definitely leans towards. And her middles have gotten so much better as the season has gone on that that's definitely going to be a strong point for West Virginia moving forward. Layla Ibrahim, the Coppin State transfer, scores fresh off the bench for West Virginia. McGaff, the sophomore, sends it away. Arizona State sets up Rebello, and she is able to come through once again. This Arizona State team Rotating pretty heavily so far in this match, but Rebello and Neal have been stalwarts on the outside, and you can see why. Right, Rebello has such a quick arm swing. She gets up so high and is able to get on top of the ball and really hit that good cross-court shot. West Virginia, a little bit of a misfire there, and we have our first service ace, and it comes from Bryn Cavell. And 
it is Covell back once again. The redshirt freshman from Wilmington, North Carolina, did not play volleyball at the college level last season. Had originally graduated from high school early to enroll at Texas A&M, made her way to Arizona State without ever playing for the Aggies, and now contributing in her second year of college for the Sun Devils as we get a whistle against West Virginia and Arizona State will maintain control. Lauren Deleuze, she's such a, you know aggressive setter. She wants to get her hands on every single ball, but unfortunately she just kind of slid under the net, which is a line violation. Worth noting that Jelly Sear, the leader in kills for this Arizona State team, we've not seen yet tonight. As Green delivers this one for West Virginia, deflected off a couple of Sun Devils and out. That's big for West Virginia to have Haley Green back in the front row, look for them to go to her, but to also use Layla Ibrahim to kind of freeze the block from Arizona State. Ibrahim's done a much better job from the attacking line, and she's really become someone that they can rely on from the front row as well. Painter rotates back onto the floor. Arizona State for Neal. Free ball in front, and Coyle's able to cover up. One of our more extended rallies here is going to be ended by Jillian Neal. Mentioned that we haven't seen Jelly Sear yet. She's over on the Arizona State bench in street clothes, but Rabello and Neal have done plenty to pick up the slack. Yeah, they have so many weapons from every single position that even if one person is missing, they can really fill in and, you know, take over where, whatever that person brought to the court. And now Neal goes back to the service line. And you saw there, she's this team's leader in service aces, Sam. That's been her calling card to this point. Uh, was a pretty high-level recruit as an outside hitter, but has turned it up as a server during her career here at Arizona State. And she's going to stay at that service line after a block. And with the you mentioned West Virginia taking a step up in terms of blocks as of late. The Mountaineers had nine blocks as a team in the loss to Cincinnati the last time out. And Layla Ibrahim, who's on the floor now, was responsible for eight of them. Neal, the serving specialist, sends it away. West Virginia in system sets up Ibrahim, and she comes through. Fresh out of the timeout, West Virginia goes to the Coppin State transfer, and she delivers. I've watched this West Virginia team all season, and the biggest improvement from the beginning of the season to now has definitely been Layla Ibrahim. She's become a much better hitter running that slide in transition, but she's also been so effective blocking. She came into this match with 99 blocks, averaging about 1.1 blocks per set, which is, which is a huge number. Green with an error from the service line will return things to Arizona State. Cole Heed already has an ace under her belt. And she sends it away. Ibrahim gets another chance, this time straight at one. With that double block from Arizona State, she was really trying to work it down that cross court shot and just got a little too behind the ball and pushed it too far out of bounds. J.J. Van Neal heavily rotating his side of the floor so far. We've seen a lot of Cole Heed, a lot of Jeter, and some different faces in the back line as well as West Virginia powers it over too strong. And Arizona State's creeping in towards that 25 number. It's going to get a little extra firepower on the outside for the Mountaineers. Nina Spatina, the freshman hitter from Slovenia, onto the floor. Cole Heed, a transfer from Indiana. Talked about her rotation with Jeter in the middle. You want to talk about people that are already in some respective history books as Fatina puts a swing down and she comes fresh off the bench and scores. And that's what you like to see for West Virginia, to see Fatina come off the bench. You know, she's probably a little cold to get that big swing. And she brings so much excitement and energy to the to their side of the court. So I'm sure that's kind of what Jen Greeny was looking at bringing her in this game. Fatina, a stalwart of the Slovenian national team program getting her first taste of college volleyball this season for the Mountaineers. Reed, one of West Virginia's better servers. Now the West Virginia transfer, Bailey Miller is able to deliver. West Virginia's leader in kills two years ago was Bailey Miller. That title went to Haley Green a year ago and Miller entering the transfer portal lands at Arizona State this year. She's played a steady role in somewhat limited time for this Arizona State team so far playing with over two kills per set so far this season. And she gets a chance here in some familiar surroundings as Painter is there for West Virginia. Back row attack from Green sets up a free ball for Spatina. Arizona State back in control. Now West Virginia with McGath. 
and it's Rebello this time coming through once again for Arizona State. That's really been the bread and butter so far. With Jelly Sear out of the lineup, they've gone to Rebello early and often, and she's rarely not come through. As the Sun Devils seek their 25th win of the season. Delo just got a fingertip to it, and West Virginia is not able to return. And that rotation, you know, they really, again, West Virginia really has to get this ball in system, limit their errors, and run their offense. Mary Schroll had over 450 digs a year ago in her first season with Arizona State. She's already nearing that number this season. She's not going to get another chance to serve, though, as West Virginia is able to score an even thing. And that was a big swing from Leader, you know, for this being her first start for West Virginia in this Big 12 play. You know, that was that's a big swing to come in with some confidence and get the point for your team. The gaff serves for West Virginia. Um, sets Rebello, big swing from the native of Brazil. And she just picks up right where she left off in that first set, Sam. Already 12 attacks for her, she's got five kills. And that just goes to show the depth that Arizona State has as well with Billy Sear not seeing any court time to have Rebello come in and be able to get those big swings from the right side. Just shows how deep that bench is for Arizona State. Covell on to serve for Arizona State. West Virginia able to return, and Jillian Neal fires it long. Ibrahim puts up such a big block because she can jump so high that being able to get there, get that block set, forces Arizona State to go over the block, which sends the ball out of bounds. We talked about this a little bit earlier. West Virginia putting multiple middle players on the floor. Right now, you've got Lidera out there uh, with Ibrahim. As Neal tries to deliver, she's not able to. Well, Lidera actually just rotating off for West Virginia. As Neal sends it off the block, and Arizona State able to take the lead back. But you're without Cassidy Tant. This is already a West Virginia team that's shorthanded at its outside hitter position. You've got four on the roster. We've seen Spatina come in off the bench, uh, but Jen Greeny has to get creative uh, at this point, and Lidera seems to be the one that she's going to go to a little more often. And when you're playing an offense that has such strong hitters, you want to put up as big of a block as you can, so getting some more middles in there gives them a bigger block, a more solid block, and a better chance to slow down the attackers from Arizona State. No slowing down Jillian, or excuse me, Savannah Colheat on that one. Fires the ball across court. She's able to score. And the Indiana transfer has certainly made an impact. She, it seems, is a little bit more apt to get mobile side to side than Claire Jeter, who's really more of a power player in the middle of the floor. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And she was able to freeze that block. Ibrahim kind of hung out in the middle and it gave that one-on-one -on -one opportunity, which is not what you want to do because Arizona State will take advantage of that every time. Jillian Neal, the serving specialist with an ace. And her father, Steven, has one of the more interesting stories I think that I've heard in all of sports as she tries to live up to what is actually a pretty big legacy as Ibrahim scores there so West Virginia gonna win the set back Jillian Neal's father Stephen was a three-time Super Bowl champion with the New England Patriots as an offensive lineman without ever playing a college football game and that's because he was a two-time national champion wrestler at Cal State Bakersfield Arizona State able to score with that deflecting off the West Virginia block. So Jillian Neal not yet matching her father in terms of national championships, but this Arizona State team ranked ninth in the nation certainly has hopes of achieving that goal perhaps this year. And that big win that they had against Kansas last week was really kind of a momentum shift, really built them up, gave them some of that extra confidence to go in and beat such a strong Kansas Jayhawks team. Cole, he pushed that long on the serve and West Virginia will rotate back around to the service line. It's Sydney Reed, the Wisconsin transfer, graduate student from Glen Elg, Maryland, leads this team in digs so far this season from the Libro position. She also leads the team in service errors, unfortunately for her. That's her 49th of the season. So it's Argentina only native of Sonora, Mexico, graduate student, as we mentioned before, played for Jen Greeny at Washington State. That delivers the serve. Coyle with a tip over, and Ung, such a complete setter, is there to make the play, and Rebello has hers, answered by West Virginia's setter, 
and Lauren DeLow, and there's just nobody home behind the block there for the Sun Devils. That was a really smart swing from Quincy Coyle, you know. The setter, everybody was pretty much pulled to this outside. She saw that, recognized that the block was there, and hit some off speed to kind of throw off the defense. That was a really smart play by Quincy Coyle. DeLow, as we mentioned earlier, crossing the 2,000 assist threshold in her career. Now sets this one for Lidera. That just clipped the back line. West Virginia able to score Lidera. Just barely snuck that in the back line. Everybody from Arizona State just screamed, get away from it. It just had enough top spin to stay in. And Lidera had such a good swing. She's able to kind of adjust. She kind of got ahead of that ball. She was able to adjust, still get the top spin on it, but send it to that deep line. Cromarty with a lot of power from that right side. And Arizona State is able to win that serve back. Cromartie had a long run at the service line in the first set for Arizona State. That's really where the Sun Devils sees control. And we'll see if she can replicate that performance here. In system chance for West Virginia. Coyle didn't quite get all of it. Neal with an opportunity as Reed goes crawling to the floor. Coyle gets another chance and she put it past the back line. Shania Cromarty, if that last name is familiar to you, is the niece of four-time Pro Bowl defensive back Antonio Cromarty. So certainly some quality genes in her family, as we mentioned before, a two-time Florida State high jump champion, a Florida State volleyball champion, went to the state final four in all four of her years of high school, as Green just stuck that in for West Virginia on the back row attack. And it looks like one of our officials overruled the other, a little bit of a dissenting opinion. And it is going to stay with Arizona State. Leader gets another chance, just couldn't quite get enough velocity on it. And that's a little too much velocity. Neil just got under that ball. Neil saw that block from West Virginia, Lidera and Maddie McGaff again, like you said, two middles setting up that block on the outside. You see that and you think, oh, I kind of need to go around that block. And that's exactly what she did, went over the block and it sailed out of bounds. Coyle to serve for West Virginia. Oong yeah, out for Bello. It's returned by West Virginia. And again, Neil just sends it long. You talked about that block, Sam. And even at the highest levels of college volleyball, not that often do you see 6-2-6-2 six, two, six, two, side by side jumping right in front of you. That's a big advantage for West Virginia in this rotation. I know, you know, as a hitter, when you go up and you see a big double block like that, it does kind of make you second guess sometimes. And once you do it once, it continues. And Coyle able to deliver an ace there for the Mountaineers who are back within one now in this second set. Quincy Coyle, the junior, played significant sets early in the season when Haley Green was recovering from an injury. Now is going to be called on even more with Cassidy Tanton out of the lineup. Neely had another ace there. Oong able to set Neal, who just played that right down the line. Didn't have to put too much behind that one, just put it where West Virginia didn't have anybody lined up. J.J. Van Neal looking for the 53rd win of his head coaching career, and that would be in 62 tries, which I'm not sure exactly what the conversion rate is on that, Sam, but I do know it's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good, especially, you know, just your second year as a head coach. That just goes to show what he's done for this program and what he's going to continue to do moving forward. Arizona State able to extend the lead a little bit further there. And again, that just shows how controlled this team is because Colhe just kind of had to do everything she could to get underneath that ball. And Arizona State was very easily able to rotate back into position and deliver a good strike. Not exactly what you were looking for there from Schroll, though. She puts that one into the net. And much like her counterpart on the other side for West Virginia, Sydney Reed, she's this Arizona State team's leader in service errors. That's her 50th of the season. McGath goes to a lofted ball in the set. Rabello answered by Coyle. In system for West Virginia. Green had it turned away. She just lofts it back across. 
Delow from the back line. Green once again. Arizona State up to the task. Rabello finds some open space, but Coyle's there. One of the longer rallies we've seen tonight. Can Neal end it? Free ball, Oom, up for Cole Heed, and she's able to score finally. Arizona State, again out of system, Sam, is able to come up with a crucial point there as part of a pretty long rally. And it seems like all the long rallies that we've had, we haven't had many, but Arizona State's been able to pull off every single one of those, and that, you know, they do such a good job out of system, in system. They're just very effective when the ball is in any kind of situation. Uh, you would know far better than I would, but uh, it would seem in a rally like that as Arizona State's block comes up once again to turn green away. It would seem in a rally like that, obviously the physical aspects of things are, are where you want to be fine-tuned, but the mental aspect, the focus, it seems would be almost as important when you've got a play that goes on that long. It does, because you want to continue running all of your offense. You know, I was a middle. One of the things that I tried to make sure that I did was continue to get out in transition, run my run my attacking, um, you know, wherever I was supposed to be attacking from on the net. And it's exhausting, but you also want to stay focused so that you can get those big points that are going to win those long rallies. There's not a whole lot not to like about J.J. Van Neal if you're an Arizona State fan. And that they've been such a great addition to the Big 12, and they've been able to compete at the highest level. And to see what they're going to do this season and the postseason, you know, I'm excited to see what he does with this team for the remainder of this year and for the years to come. Van Neal coming from USC, where he spent five seasons as an assistant coach, made three NCAA tournaments. Also spent three years as an assistant at Utah. Before that, a standout club coach. He was National Club Coach of the Year in 2012. Spent time with the United States Women's National Team as a scout and a consultant. Uh, and then how about this, Sam? J.J. Van Neal, before he really got into the coaching world uh, in volleyball, spent 12 years in finance. Had a completely different career. And, you know, I'd like to be able to do that. Have one career and then just decide one day that I want to be really good at something else. And J.J. Van Neal has absolutely been able to do that. Yeah, that's not that's not something that you hear every day, that's for sure. West Virginia caught in the net, and Arizona State is going to maintain the service here with Bryn Cavell. Was ranked as a top 100 recruit in the nation coming out of high school in 2023 and has found more and more opportunity in this Arizona State lineup in her first season on the court as a redshirt freshman. Neal out of system. West Virginia able to respond with Haley Green, but Neal is there for the dig. From the back row, it's Cromartie. And Green just got on top of it and put it in the net. Yeah, that was Haley Green. I believe that was her 21st attempt. They're going to her a lot. So she's really going to have to get that swing kind of manage and get back into this game if, she, if West Virginia wants to compete in the second set. 21 opportunities for Green so far, but just four kills. As without Tanton, he's, she's been the center of this offense as Lidera had it blocked. Cole Heed coming together with Neal. Something about the Pac-12, a two-time Pac-12 coach of the year at Washington State. Green just too strong that time. Seven straight points now for Arizona State. West Virginia was back within one at 10-9, within two at 12-10. But now the Sun Devils starting to assert themselves here in this second set. It's another ace for Covell. And volleyball really is a game of run. So once you kind of get on that run, it's hard to get out of that. In West Virginia, you know, every single point, they keep falling further and further behind. They really need to forget about those previous points, focus on where they're at right now, and try to get the ball back on their side. When Jen Greeny this season has needed some extra help on the back line, she's gone to Kristen McBride, who's come into the game now. Back there with Delo and Reed. That one directed towards her, but Neal is able to score as it deflects off the West Virginia block. And Jillian Neal has been so impressive. The sophomore from San Diego, we talked about through the first season and a half of her college career, has primarily been a serving specialist. Uh, but with Jelly Sear not playing this evening, J Jillian Neal has really turned it on. And she has the most kills for Arizona State 
uh, in this match or in this set or in this match. She has eight kills uh, with only four errors. Arizona State now with its 10th consecutive point. It's all come with Bryn Cavell back at the service line. Lauren Bodley's come in for West Virginia for the first time here as well. So with her on the floor along with McBride, Jen Greeny searching for answers going through every seat on her bench. Schroll out of system for Neal. West Virginia able to tee up Bodley. She keeps it alive for the moment. Ung to Neal, another big swing from her. And McBride able to come up with the dig. On a slide, Coheed turned away. Ung with a setter attack this time, but again, West Virginia keeps the rally going. The Mountaineer block stands tall once again. Neal just slices this one out of play. I think she got a little too worried about the block there, Sam. Reached up, tried to send it over the top of the block with her fingertips, and just never controlled it. And that's what you want to see if you're West Virginia. Try to get them to not swing hard. Try to make a few more different decisions than what they're used to and force them to make the errors. So that ends a 10-0 scoring run for Arizona State as Painter cycles back on to serve. They've really been going to Jillian Neal and it's for good reason, her ninth kill of the match. And it puts Arizona State back in control just two points away from seizing the first two sets. And Arizona State has such a good block defense as well. So they're there in coverage behind the hitter ready in case the ball comes back from the block. You can tell that that's something that they've really worked on in practice. McBride sprawls for it. West Virginia going to have to hurry here. Green with another powerful swing that Schroll just couldn't handle. And the Mountaineers are able to get a point off that. We talked about it before. Uh, it's a little bit of a baseball adage, but I think it applies to Haley Green in this case. Swing hard in case you hit it. That time she did, and even though I don't necessarily know that it was directed anywhere in particular, she's able to score. And she did a much better job on that swing. She got more on top of the ball and was able to swing down instead of getting behind it and pushing it out, which is what she had done on a few of her attacks earlier in this set. A little bit of a scramble for West Virginia. Coyle able to control it. Miller had it blocked. They go back to her. The Mountaineers are able to tee up Coyle. Another big swing for her. It stays inside that outside line. A little bit of crossfire there from Quincy Coyle, and she comes up with the kill. That was a great swing from Coyle, but also if you watch Layla Ibrahim, she comes off from that block, runs the slide in transition, which freezes the middle from Arizona State, and gave Quincy Coyle that one-on-one -on -one opportunity to get the big swing. Green getting some service opportunities here for West Virginia. Boom trying to dump it across, but the West Virginia Mountaineers, not to be fooled, Layla Ibrahim in with another block. And that's why it's so important to know what's happening on the other side of the court. She's in the front row. We know that she's an active setter. And for Ibrahim to read that, that was a really good block from Ibrahim. Another chance for Miller. This time, West Virginia not able to answer. We've talked quite a bit about Bailey Miller over the years here at West Virginia. Now at Arizona State, again, not necessarily a huge role for her this year, but she's made an impact when she's had the opportunity, and she certainly made an impact there. She always had a big swing here at West Virginia, and she did it there again. She got a little help from the net, kind of threw the, the trajectory of the ball off, but again, just a big swing from Bailey Miller. Ibrahim comes across on the slide. Nobody home for Arizona State. Just a gaping hole on that back line she was able to put it down on. She has such good hang time. She gets up in the air and she's able to see where the holes are in the court and she puts it there. So Sydney Reed to serve as Arizona State is now on set point. West Virginia's gonna need a run. Jeter able to tap it across and to low. Answers Ooms failed attempt to dump it across with a little bit of a tap of her own and she's able to score. Delo is, is she's so athletic. She has a big swing as well for a setter. And so to be able to take advantage of that opportunity with the ball a little tight with her being in the front row is a good decision from Delo. And now an ace from Sydney Reed, West Virginia, not wanting to go quietly here on set point in this second set. And that's something we've noticed with West Virginia all year. Third set. She's rotated pretty heavily with Savannah Colheen throughout the match so far. Roberta Rabello had a big first set, and she starts the third off just as she handled business in the first. 
She's had a lot of attempts. West Virginia has been able to get a few touches on the ball, uh, but that was her sixth kill for this match. Rebello, you mentioned, with six kills. The native of Brazil uh, has had a long career here at Arizona State. She's seen quite a bit in the Sun Devil uniform. She's seen quite a bit around the world as well. As she gets another chance there, taps it over the West Virginia block. Delow able to cover up for the Mountaineers. Green with a big swing. Cromarty sprawls for it. Mountaineers go to McGath, but Arizona State, we've talked about their ability defensively, has been up to the task. Neal able to get it over the head of Delow, and West Virginia is not there to clean it up. And it really makes sense why they've had multiple defensive players of the week, both in you know their middles and in their libero. Their defense is so strong; they're able to pick up everything and run an offense, even if the setter doesn't get the touch on the second ball. Talked about Roberta Rabello uh, being something of a world traveler. She's well noted in this Arizona State program for her desire to go just about anywhere, anytime. As West Virginia does score on the Arizona State violation there, their first point of this set. Cabello has visited 15 countries and uh, has said now in the past uh, that with what she's doing uh, with her college degree where uh, she wants to be a social media manager that would allow her to travel uh, just about anywhere that she wants uh, and manage social media as Arizona State is able to score there once again. And just as we mentioned, Roberta Robello comes up with it. Yeah, she's had a really strong game. And again, we talked about Jelly Sear not being in this lineup tonight. For her to step up and get those really big swings at big opportunities for Arizona State, uh, you know, that's something that I'm sure Coach Van Neal has really liked to see in this match. Rebello with another kill there. And she's going to cycle off for a well-needed rest. Covell coming into the match. Uh, so Rebello really, as I mentioned, a grad student, somebody that has seen a lot in this program, went through the coaching transition that brought J.J. Van Neal here. And she's really turned things on as of late and has gotten a lot of opportunities in this match. So is Layla Ibrahim for West Virginia. Nice defensive play there from Arizona State. Sends it back, as does that block from Colheed. Leader is going to get a chance. Lost her footing a bit. Wasn't able to get some power behind it. She gets another opportunity. Arizona State with Neal had it deflect off Coyle and out. That one may have gone out past the service line regardless, but it goes off of Coyle's fingertips and out. Yeah, and when it's coming at your your face that quickly, sometimes you just throw your hands up as just a reaction, and it looks like that's what Coyle did on that swing. Obviously, it cost West Virginia a point there, but I'm going to say, with a ball coming at your face with that kind of velocity, I can respect the self-defense. Yeah, you got you to protect the face, for sure. And I can respect... The swing there from Haley Green. We've talked uh, pretty extensively, really throughout the season, since she's been here at West Virginia the last two seasons, about the power she's got in that right arm. And there's very little that you can do if you're Arizona State when she gets the ball in rhythm. And she does such a good job of reading that block, too. She could see that the block was pulled over towards the line and she had that cross-court shot open. And West Virginia just not lined up properly. You saw Jen Greeny over there on the sideline just kind of put her hands up as if to say, who was supposed to be there as Neil uh, really just seemed to try to want to keep the rally going there and ended up dropping in front of a couple of gray jerseys. Green had it blocked. She'll get another chance and she'll score it this time. Yeah, that was a big swing from Haley Green and a great set from Warren DeLow. Like I said in the last set, you know, DeLow tries to get her hands under every single second ball she can. And that was a really good position and a really good swing from Haley Green to get her thumb down and turn that sharp cross court shot. So Green, West Virginia's kills leader a year ago, has been getting plenty of the ball tonight with Tanton on the sideline. Boom for Cromarty. Reed sends up a free ball. She is able to answer once again. Some strong defensive play here from West Virginia to keep this rally alive. Cromarty gets a second crack at it. And the block up for West Virginia. Her third try. Ibrahim slides out. Neal sends it sky high. Fourth chance from Camardi is blocked. She'll try a fifth. And Sydney Reed is there.
Cole Heed had it sent wide off the set. West Virginia out of system is going to tee up Coyle. Six time for Cromarty, and again, she's not able to score. West Virginia rises high with the block. It's DeLow and Ibrahim. Ibrahim makes that look so easy, but as a middle, it's not easy to have that many block attempts in such a long rally. She's able to move across that net so quickly, get the block closed, and even though they didn't get a touch on that ball, their presence there definitely throws off the hitter and makes them feel a little under pressure. And Cromartie's able to answer quickly. She got six bites at the apple during that last rally and was able to deliver on her first this time. Uh, for West Virginia, you've got DeLow there as the setter, the only healthy setter on your roster right now with, with Alexis Finvold out of the lineup. It's, it's got to be an asset when you go to those blocks with your setter to have her there at six foot two, right? Absolutely. You know, when West Virginia, they do run that 5 1 offense. So DeLow's playing in the front row for three rotations. And so to have a taller, you know, kind of longer arm uh, setter up there for the block, it's definitely an advantage for West Virginia. Arizona State able to deliver from the middle of the floor. We talked about the fact that Claire Jeter has spent a lot of time rotated out in this match, but she makes an impact there with a score. Cole impacts at the top of the net, wasn't able to sneak that one across. It's a service error. And the right to serve swings back around to Sydney Reed. Bringing a championship pedigree to this West Virginia program for her final season of college volleyball. Um puts that one across. We've talked a lot tonight about how active Argentina Um can be. She's been stuffed a couple of times when she's tried to dump it across, but that time she's successful. She did a really good job that time. She went up with two hands and at the very last second was able to dump it over her head into that uh, four position. And that was just a really good read by Um. Argentina Um, an honorable mention All-American a year ago for West Virginia coach Jen Greeny at Washington State. And now just a mistimed jump from McGath. She never made contact with that ball. Yeah, it was a little, you know, mistimed on the set and on that, on her approach. Again, when you're running those slides or anything behind the setter, the timing has to be perfect. Oog, a member of the Mexican senior national team, puts the serve away and the block rises high once again for Arizona State. Claire Jeter there to do it once again. Six foot three, the graduate transfer from Missouri City, Texas, is really just hard to put it past when she's there by herself, let alone when they go up with the double block. Yeah, and I think that was her first stuff block of the match. So they have, we haven't really seen what she is capable of doing in that front row. Green puts it over from the back row. Jeter down the middle, it's blocked by McGath. She'll come to the outside. Oh, she got it off the fingertips. West Virginia appealing for a deflection. And that's what the officials say as well. The Mountaineers see that deflect off the Arizona State block. We'll get another look at it. But as it stands right now, it's going to be a West Virginia score. It was Cromarty there on the outside. And looking right down the line. Not sure if it clipped the outside of the hand, but we're going to play on. Rabello back onto the floor. They send it to her immediately. West Virginia able to come up with it. McGaff into the block, but it's sent wide. Yeah, Arizona State had that block set. They just didn't quite get their hands turned back in towards the court, and it was deflected out of bounds. Now, this is about the point in that second set where Arizona State really asserted its dominance, Sam. West Virginia trailed 10 to 9 in that one, and then 12 10 before Arizona State rattled off 10 straight points. If you're the Mountaineers, you've got to settle in right here and make this a competitive set. Claire Jeter obviously wants the, the opposite way as she scores there. And that was a good swing from Jeter. Uh, you know, like I said before, we haven't really seen much from her at, at that attacking position. She's hitting 422 coming into this match. So she's a very effective hitter that doesn't have a lot of errors. So look to see her get more attempts on that ball in this third set. Back row attack for Green. Spun towards Zoom, who's able to get underneath it. Neil had it deflected. 
Boy, across for West Virginia, nobody home for Arizona State. Cromartie had a long way to run as the Sun Devils had just rotated out of position during the rally. And West Virginia, those are the points that you're going to have to get if you want to get back in the match. And Coyle's done a really good job of that kind of situational hitting. If she has a hard time getting that hard swing, she's done a good job of finding the hole on the Arizona State side. In system chance for Claire Jeter. She's just not going to miss those. That was just perfectly set up down the middle by Oong. And Claire Jeter, the reigning Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week, comes up with a little offense. And that's not an offensive play we've seen a lot of. Usually the middle is in the middle position, and she was actually coming from that right side, kind of running an, an opposite slide almost in front of the setter. And that's not an easy play to run, and she makes it look super easy. Rabello had it blocked, Green and Lidera coming together. You saw the face there from Haley Green, as if to say, just not in my house. She turned to her teammates and said, we've got this, we've got a chance to get back in this. This is still a two point set and the Mountaineers are not going away. The first block there for Green, she's got seven kills on the night. Neal sends it across, McGaff has improved there on the back line this season, Sam, but just not quite able to get down underneath that one. That was a great swing by Colhe. They ran kind of like a tandem with her and Neil. Neil ran more of a quick with Colhe coming in right behind her. And sometimes that's hard for the block to read that tandem because they're not sure if the ball is going to be the quick one in the front or the higher ball and with the second hitter coming in. Delo had a long way to run for it. Green's going to come forward, stuck it inside that outside line. And West Virginia hanging tough here in the third. Green's done a great job of hitting that deep corner. That's really her bread and butter shot, that cross court deep corner around the block. And she's been much more efficient with that, especially here in the third set. Painter again rotates back around to serve. Neal over the block, punch right back by Ibrahim. And Green has an answer. Cole heed to the outside. Not able to get it around Coyle. Ibrahim off the block and it drops. Layla Ibrahim, not the biggest middle player you're going to see on the floor, just six foot one. She makes up with it uh, with plenty of athleticism. She does such a great job. You know, I, I can't say enough about how well she has done throughout this season and running that slide in transition. She gets up so high and is just such an effective middle in that transition play. Cole Heed shoved it wide as she went to the outside and West Virginia is even this third set. Painters brought a little bit of a spark with her service play. Nearly had an ace there. Green gets a chance from DeLow. Off the ball across. DeLow, Green with another shot. This one set back by Schroll. Ibrahim to the outside, punches it through the block. Just so much power behind that one. She put it right between the hands of Cole Heat and Neal. And that's her sixth kill in this match. She's really done a good job of moving around you know, blocking on the, the pin, coming around, hitting that slide behind the setter, and, and just pretty much going wherever she needs to go to be an effective hitter. West Virginia momentarily had the lead here in the third set, but Painter pushed it a little bit long. And now Jillian Neal will have an opportunity back there. Neal, this team's leader in service ace, is 29 coming into the night. But she comes up with an error there, finds the net, and West Virginia the first. The right hand of Jillian Neal, and now we're going to get a new face on the floor for Arizona State. Bella Faria, a true freshman from Springfield, Missouri, sends the serve away. Ibrahim had it blocked. Claire Jeter's played as much as she has in this entire match here in the third, and she certainly made an impact up front. And they've tried to slow down Ibrahim on the last couple of plays, and, and that time they were able to really get the block set, get it closed, get over the net with their hands facing in towards the court to get a tough block. West Virginia tries to set up Coyle. Diving punch there from Faria, fresh off the bench. Neal charging forward, just directed that to a corner, and Haley Green just out of position. You saw Jen Greeny step up off the sideline, just handing the air, and as if to say, where do you guys think you're supposed to be? 
as Neal was really just trying to keep that play alive and found some empty space. Yeah, on that defense, Haley Green is supposed to kind of come behind Sydney Reed as they cross over. She takes the short stuff, and Green was just a little out of position. And Green that time directs it at him. Faria off the bench has had a couple of serves that have led to points here. She was a high school AVCA second team All-American last year, and she comes up with an ace that time. Ibrahim just swung and missed at it, and Painter was not quite positioned right to try to keep the play alive. That was a really good serve from Faria to go at that middle position. As a former middle myself, sometimes when that serve comes to you, you don't really know what to do, and you just get in the way. That time she sends it at Painter, West Virginia able to scramble and return it, but this time a big swing from Cromartie. Delo had to go out of play to try to bring it back in, not able to keep it inside the pin. Cromartie has such a quick swing, flick of the wrist. She's able to really get on top of the ball, and her vertical, it's its insane that how high she can jump on that outside. And Cromartie, really a versatile player for J.J. Van Neal as Faria pushes it long. Spent most of last season in a defensive specialist role. Uh, she played in 24 matches, spent a lot of the time on the back line. Now she gets an opportunity up front. Coming into tonight, over 220 kills. But as well, that defensive specialist role, she's closing in on 200 digs for the season two. She looks like she's been hitting for years. I mean, she has such a natural swing. Her footwork is so good, so quick. It looks like she's been doing that for a really long time. Transferred into this Arizona State program two years ago from Mississippi State, where she came up with over 500 kills and more than 400 digs in her time with the Bulldogs as well. That one sent across and sent wide. West Virginia able to take advantage of an error there from Hokulani Perez, who's come in as the third middle in this rotation. We've seen a lot of Cole Heed. We've seen an impressive performance from Jeter in limited sets so far. And now Hokulani Perez getting some burn there on the front line. They're going to go to her. She tips it over the block. Delo across and over the outstretched arms of Oon. Arizona State's defense is kind of pulled in a little too close to the net. You want players to come in and cover that block, but you also need to have some defense out on that kind of outer ring there, and, and West Virginia was just able to find that hole. Jeter back onto the floor. And Reed to serve for West Virginia. Camardi with a chance, sprayed it wide. Mountaineers continuing to show fight here in the third set. Arizona State had extended its lead, but the Mountaineers are now back within two. Reed had a couple of nice service plays late in that second set. We'll see if the Mountaineers can make a run again with her at the line. Coyle had it blocked. And that was the setter, Oong, that went up high for it. We talked about how effective of a block Lauren Delo is on West Virginia's side, but Oom, you know, as a setter, she's also a very solid blocker, and to get that solo block, that was a big, big play for the Arizona State setter. In Argentina, Oong, we've talked really ad nauseum tonight about how capable she is doing just about everything as she comes up with a dig there. Rebello across for Arizona State. Green on another back row attack, but Neal able to cover up. Now Jeter down the middle, and there's simply no answer for that. And we can't say enough about the Arizona State defense. I mean, they've been able to pick up some balls. Those those swings from Haley Green were so hard and so quick, and they made it look like it was just a free ball sent over. So their defense has really been the difference for them tonight. Argentina Oong at the service line, and when it comes to her versatility, it's really hard to fathom someone being able to match it as she sent that one long. Averages over 10 assists percent, over two digs percent, and over a kill percent. There's not a lot of setters in America that I think are doing that. No, she's definitely, you know, you can tell that she's definitely one of the be best setters that I've seen for sure in across the country. You know, she's so dynamic, so effective, and she reads the other side of the court so well that she knows where to set the ball. She knows when to tip it over the net on the second ball, and she digs very well. Arizona State looking to set up match point here. McGath back onto the floor, had it blocked. And West Virginia just in a little bit of a scramble situation there. Had three players all come together and collide. 
And they were not able to respond to the swing there from Arizona State, who is now a point away from its 13th consecutive win. It's Cromartie back to set it up. She had a long run at the service line back in the first set. This one going to be significantly shorter. Can't